talk about chords and the arcs related to those chords. And a lot of today deals with properties and knowing then how to use those properties within example problems. So there are two properties listed up here. Okay. The first one just says if angle AOB, so that is this angle here, is congruent to COD, this angle here, then we know that those chords which are AB and CD, they're going to be congruent. So if those central angles there are congruent, then the chords associated that open up to those um, chords are going to be congruent. Now, th from this statement to this statement, if you just realize we're doing the converse. So if you flip it and say that the chords are congruent, therefore you know those angles are congruent. And also I want to include here, just a side note, if this is a central angle, then this arc is going to be congruent to that arc. Because remember, central angles are equal to the arcs they open up to. So not only are the chords equal, but those arcs AB is going to be congruent to arc CD, those minor arcs. All right, let's look at property, the second property here. Now it says if you have these chords AB and CD, if they're congruent, then those arcs, okay, that are included there, A, B, and C, they're going to be congruent also. All right? And then once again, the converse applies. So if you have the arcs congruent, then you know the chords are congruent. So make sure you have those two properties written down. The next property is the same idea. It still deals with, we have the converse that works. Okay? But now this time with the chords, it says if O, E, from O to E is from the center to the chord, so center to the chord, if it's congruent to the other center to the chord, okay, so we have those, then you are able to say that these two chords are going to be congruent, A, B, and C, D. And then likewise, if you flip it, if the chords are congruent, then they're equal distance from the center. Also, you need to check they have to have the same angle degree. It doesn't have to be 90, but they need to intersect those chords at the same angle. If they don't intersect at the same angle, then the chords are not congruent. Okay? They have to have the same angle also. So let's look at an example of this property with numbers. It wants to know what is the length of RS. So it wants to know what the length of this chord is. First off, you need to check that they're the same distance, so you have 9 and 9, so they are the same distance, and you have the same angle. So, since we know that, we know this chord is going to be equal. We have SR that's going to be congruent to PR. So now looking, we have 12.5 is from P to Q. Those lines there mean that that's 12.5, so if you add it up, PR is equal to 25, therefore our S is equal to 25. That is the length of that chord. All right, now here are three properties that actually go together, and they have three key words that I'm going to highlight in each property. The first word is diameter. The second word is that symbol, which means perpendicular. So we have diameter, I'm sorry, perpendicular, diameter, and then the last word that's important is bisector or bisects. Okay, so those are three key words that are within all of these properties. There are if-then statements with the properties. So first off, if, if it says you have the diameter and you have perpendicular, then you can assume the following, that e, CE is congruent to ED. So really, you have diameter, perpendicular, then you know that it's bisected, okay, because that diameter is cutting this chord in half. Also, the arcs are going to be congruent. So diameter perpendicular, you can assume that that chord is bisected and the arc is bisected. So looking at the next property, we start with something different. We have diameter listed. We have, now that this is bisected, so we have diameter bisect. So then we can assume that it's perpendicular. There's a 90 degree angle. So diameter bisects, you can show perpendicular. Last one down below says that AB is the perpendicular bisector. 
So now we have perpendicular, we have bisects, so that hopefully you can see the pattern. Since we have perpendicular bisects, then we have diameter. Okay, that means it's going through the center. So, if you notice, any two of these implies the third. So you have to have two of those words to then say, all right, that third holds true. Okay? So let's look at two examples. The first one here, if you notice, you have from the center and you have perpendicular. Because you have center or diameter and perpendicular, then you know that equals bisects. Okay, that helps us because that means this chord is bisected, giving seven down in that triangle. So now we have this right triangle. That is the reason why you have perpendicular, because you will find right triangles then within your circle. So now we are trying to find the radius, which is the hypotenuse. You have three, and now we have to use seven. So r squared equals seven squared plus three squared. r squared equals 58. And then we're going to square root that. Square root of 58, or if you turn it into decimal, it'll be about 7.62, which will be the radius. See if you can do the second one on your own. All right, so looking at this, what I do want to emphasize is this is the radius, right? 15 is the radius. Well, I can also draw that line down this way to create my 90 degree angle and label 15 there because remember, you can draw the radius all around the circle. It's still going to be equal. So looking at that, here should be your equation. 15 squared equals 11 squared plus y squared. And then when you do your math, you should get y equals 10.2. All right. So, come in tomorrow and we're going to practice these with numbers and uh, know your properties.